Hey darts fans, that's Timo Newman here, the transporter. Welcome to the good ship Undarted Waters. Today's video is definitely about the bullseye and the 25, as you will see. It's been a few days since I've posted because I'm working on several different series for the channel actually, and uh, it's really exciting. Quite a lot of hard work though, so I thought what I'd do is make this video, it's kind of an add-on to the series that we did called um, Secrets of the Dartboard. And it was a topic I never got around to talking about. I thought at the time it was maybe a little bit niche, but actually I think it's gonna be quite cool. I think you might enjoy this. And I do believe that one of our community, it might have been Bart in Belgium, actually mentioned this as a question. And the question basically is, is it possible to to basically use the bull and the 25 for power scoring rather than just for combination out shots and checkouts and so on? And so this is what we're going to talk about today. So without further ado, let me get my whiteboard and we'll see how interesting this can be. And we'll see a game that we can play that will really test us on the bullseye and and prove to us whether we can really do power scoring on the ball or not. And you'll see what I mean. So here's the, the whiteboard. And this has the crudest picture you will ever see on it of a dartboard. Because we're not interested today in the segments, all the different numbers. We just want to think of the dartboard as these concentric circles which was the whole basis of our geometry of the dartboard or secrets of the dartboard series. So there's the, the red bullseye, 50 points, the green outer ball, 25 points, and then you've got your inner singles, you've got your treble ring, you've got your outer singles, your big singles, and then you've got the double ring right around the outside. Now, can you remember, um, I'll put links in the description below of videos for folks who haven't watched that series, but there were a number of things that we discovered when we looked at the secrets of the dartboard. One of them was we did an exact calculation of what a blindfold player would get if they threw darts randomly at the dartboard, okay? And what we found was that the, um, let me write it down here, that the Average score for a random player is 40.1. That would be for their three darts, okay? If they didn't hit any trebles or doubles or bullseyes, then you can very easily calculate the average score by just looking at the average of the numbers one through 20 and you get an average of 10 and a half. And so for a visit, that's 10 and a half times three which is 31 and a half. So you might think that the average score for a blindfold player is 31 and a half, but it's higher than that because occasionally they hit trebles, occasionally they hit dub doubles, and very occasionally they'll hit the bullseye as well. And it pumps up that 31 and a half up to 40.1. So I had talked about Tony, who is my computer program on the computer who can play random darts, and Tony would get 40.1. Blindfold darts at the dartboard, okay. Now, here's a question. Imagine that we drew a circle between the bullseye and the treble ring. An imaginary circle. And imagine that Tony was only allowed to throw his darts inside that dotted blue circle, okay? And the question is, what would Tony's average score be if um, he was only allowed to do that? And so basically, he doesn't get any trebles or doubles, but he does still have access to the bullseye. So it's gonna be a little bit more than the number we mentioned. Um, so for just singles then, just singles on the dartboard, um, which sounds like a pop song from the 1970s, doesn't it? It's kind of quite poignant. Uh, singles on the dartboard, um, it's 31 and a half is the average score per visit. But it's going to be a bit higher than that because you have access to the bull and the 25. 
Now what we can do is say that if that dotted line is very close to the trebles, nearly all your darts are going to go in the single. So your average is going to be roughly, say, 31 and a half, 32. On the other hand, if you shrink that dotted circle all the way down to the red dot, you only hit, Tony would only hit the bullseye every dart then, okay? If, you, that's, if that dotted blue circle is absolutely tiny just at the bullseye, and so his average was it would be 150. If you expand it to include the outer bull, you can actually work out that his average score per visit would be 88. So if you only ever hit the bull outer bull, you can work out that your average score would be for per visit is 88. Okay, that's roughly 29 per dart. So it's not 25 because you hit one in six darts goes into the inner bull. All right, so you get 29 per dart on average, plus a little tiny bit of decimal, and it turns out to be 88 per visit. All right, so this is kind of interesting. If that dotted blue line is just around the outer bull, you're getting 88 per visit, but as we make that circle bigger and bigger, and you're only allowed to throw within that circle, eventually when it hits the trebles, your average score will be around 32. So that means that there is a circle that we can draw where Tony's average score would be the same as if he were aiming at the, the whole board, namely 40.1. That's the magic circle. Because for this mini dartboard then, Tony doesn't see any difference. Tony says, well, on that magic uh, dartboard, I get the same average, I get 40.1. So there's going to be a magic circle. Okay, where if you throw darts randomly inside that circle, your average score is going to be 40.1. Because you're getting just enough benefit from the bullseye and the outer bull to boost your average from around 31 to 32 up to 40.1. And for a blindfold player, if they're only allowed to throw within there, for them it's just like the real, the whole dartboard, okay? So in other words, the, the bull and the, the inner bull and the outer bull for this magic dartboard are giving you just the same boost as you get from the trebles and doubles on the whole dartboard. So what is the size of that magic circle? So I've worked it out and it's a cute number. It's a diameter of 83.2 millimeters. And you might say, well, why is that a cute number? And the reason is, when you subtract the um, outer bull radius from the radius of this perfect circle, it turns out that this gap here is unbelievably, it's 25.4 millimeters. In other words, it's one inch exactly. So if you've watched the Secrets of the Dartboard series, you know that whatever we look at, you find these incredible coincidences, these incredible magic numbers. And we found another one here that the, 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 the magic circle that makes this dartboard the same for a blindfold player as the big one, that they get an average of 40.1, it needs to have a radius which is exactly one inch bigger than the outer bull. In other words, the diameter needs to be 83.2 millimeters. Right, fantastic. So what I'm going to do is, let's get rid of this whiteboard. I'm not going to show you how to do this in detail, but you'll get the idea. You can get a piece of paper. Okay, can you see that? Okay, there's a piece of paper. And what I've done is used a pair of compasses that you used to have at school, I barely use these anymore, but we used to do geometry at school, you get a pair of compasses and you make a circle with a diameter of 83, 83 millimeters, and then use a pair of scissors, just cut up, cut around, okay, it's so on the back side there, you see that's where I've cut into the paper, I've cut round my circle, and I know where the center is, I'm gonna put this on the dartboard 
and um, we can then put be Tony and play darts on this magic dartboard. So I'm going to pause the video here and put this on the board because you, you don't want to watch me being cat handed with that because I'm left handed, right? But once I've got it on, we'll come back and I'll do a demo and we'll see how Tony or myself gets on. So I'll see you in a minute. So welcome back everyone. Um, I've uh, taped this piece of paper now to the board making sure that the center is right in the middle of the bowl there. So I can take this little circle out from the middle now and you'll see that reveals our magic dartboard. So this is the size of the board you need where a, a, a blindfold player like Tony gets the same average in this board as he would from the whole board. So the, the bull and the 25 are boosting exactly how the trebles and singles would normally boost on a full dart board. Okay, so if you throw your darts in a board of this size all the time, your average will be 40. So if you wanted to use the bull and uh, outer bowl for power scoring, you'd need to be significantly tighter grouped than this little dartboard here if you wanted to say average 50 or 60. Okay, um, just to give you a couple of interesting numbers. So the area of this magic dartboard is almost exactly 1 16th the area of the whole scoring um, board that we normally use. And with this mini dartboard here, the bull now is about two and a half percent the area of the board. So you've got a randomly two and a half percent chance of hitting the bull and the outer bull is about twelve and a half percent of this of this board. And the other, what is it, eighty-five percent roughly is basically your singles. Okay. So let's just have a quick go at this. I'll just have a few visits and see if we can get a rough average. I need to be doing hopefully a lot better than 40 if I'm grouping my darts more towards the bull. And hopefully I can get most of my darts actually in the magic dart board as well. Okay, so that's a very modest first visit. That's just 13 points. That's not going to be very helpful, is it? So 13 points after one visit. Well, that helps quite a lot. So that's, um, that's a ton. So we're 113 after two visits. And what have we got there? That's 55. So was that 113, was it? So that's 118, 168 after three. That's actually 60 points, believe it or not. That's actually quite funny. So <laughs> I'll just have one more visit, but that's really silly. 168, so that's 228 after four. And oh, that's very fitting that we end on a bull. So that's 75, 85, that's 88. And what was it? Did I say 223? Anyway, it's roughly 300. So that was roughly a 60 average there. I got, I think I got a bit lucky there on the last visit. Let's turn this glaring light off here and I'll just reduce the magnification because it's a bit too much. Um, there we go. So that's, that's it really. I mean, I think this is great fun. Um, I'm not sure if it helps your bull hitting or not, but you know, obviously you, you're not allowed, you can't take this to, to your local club and just quickly put it on for your turns if you want to use the bull for power scoring. But it does give you an idea how accurate you have to be if you want to say hit a 50 or a 60 average um, on the bull. It has to be a lot better than this circle. And if anyone's interested and they, they want to say, say well, how big a circle is it for say a 60 average, and they want to try that with a smaller circle, I'm happy to calculate that for them. Um, so do in the comment section, or you can email me with the channel email address. I'm happy to just calculate that. Only take me a couple of minutes because I've got all the formulas written down in my darts notebook, which is full of calculations for the series coming up on projectiles, including damping. It's a big story. It's going to be a long, interesting series, I think. I can't wait to start it, but I've got to check my calculations so I don't give you a load of old gibberish. So anyway, with that, my friends, 
i hope you're all doing well three darts at the oki make them count and i'll see you next time